why should someone not become a PA? One, two, three, <sighs> this is a, a really good question. And I think, you know, seeing, you know, how social media has come into it. Um, don't go into becoming a PA just because you want money. Uh, this is way more than that. These are people's lives. This is not for a title. People will still call you whatever they want you to call you. Uh, don't go into it because you think you're gonna go on vacation like crazy. Uh, unless, you know, don't think of it because it's a shortcut to med school, you know, because all oh, people are gonna call me doctor, I'm not gonna correct them. Uh, don't do it for the hype. It is not a hype, this is a profession. If you look into the history of it, the profession is because there's a shortage and we need it. ¿Qué onda, plebes? My name is Mario Navarro. I'm the Mexican PA. Thank you for joining us. And today we have a special guest, one of my uh, close friends and mentors, um, joining us for a 73 Preguntas. And here he is. Cool. Hey, everyone. How's it going? What is up, compa? Nothing, nothing. Just, you know, finish shift. Like, I'm like glistening like a donut, but it's all good, you know, so we're here. All right. You excited for your uh, 73 Preguntas? Yeah, I've had seen no me duermo like halfway through it, but it's all good. <laughs> no, it's all good. You'll be doing most of the talking, so so you'll be doing the hard work. So, Rigo, tell us, what is your full name and specialty that you're currently working in? Okay, so government issued, it would be Rigoberto Ramos Jr. Uh, I am uh, currently working in primary care, um, and but emphasis with pediatrics, OBGYN, and internal medicine. So it's under the umbrella of family medicine, but I'll tell you more about my schedule as we go along with the questions. Dope, dope. So uh, how many years into practice are you? So coming up is actually my one year anniversary. I graduated last year and then um, been practicing literally like August is my anniversary month. So I'm excited. Sweet, sweet. So still an, a new grad, you would say? Yes, I think. Yeah. And I still have uh, way much more to learn. So for sure. So one year, I think to the first three years is considered new grads. Okay. And uh, where'd you go to undergrad? So undergrad, I was a community college person, and then I transferred over. So I went to two community colleges. I went to El Camino Compton, and then I also did Cerritos College uh, Juntos, and then I transferred over to Cal State Dominguez Hills, where I got my bachelor's. Cool. And then uh, PA school? For PA school, I was part of the inaugural cohort of Cal State Monterey Bay. So, uh, yeah, and I graduated 2021. So, again, the one-year mark. Okay. And, and why did you uh, choose that, that program specifically? So initially, I had gone into two schools. Um, I had other interview invites, but I'm like, ah, like, first off, it's expensive. And, you know, uh, it was rough. So when Seriously. it came to choosing, yeah, for right. So when it came to choosing my decision, it was, you know, you know, time. So how long was the program, how expensive it was. And um, I am, I don't know, I think I'm kind of like stubborn and hard headed where I like a challenge and then I'm going to complain the whole way, but, uh, you know, being part of the inaugural <laughs> cohort, you know, it's, we are the guinea pigs. So I feel like, you know, I'm all about re revolution for change and just, you know, being like the first of many. And, you know, I'd rather put the stress on myself so the next people can be better. Um, so uh, I wanted to be at a program and make it the, me the, the best program ever. So uh, sure enough, you know, it's up and rising and, you know, a lot of the stuff that, I liked from other programs that, you know, were my top choices. I try to implement that into my program. So um, like a lot of the volunteer stuff, the mentorship, y todo eso. Um, that's literally all my groundwork that I did. So you're welcome. That's, so, that's, <laughs> that's freaking awesome to hear. And, yeah. and uh, how many, how many times did you uh, apply to PA school? Uh, just once. And luckily. Just uh, once. Ir along, ir I know. Uh, no, I applied uh, nine programs, uh, rejected automatically from two, and I got seven interview invites, but only went to two, and I got into both. Okay. And uh, what did you do for your uh, pre-PA, uh, like, healthcare experience hours? Uh, the ESO, I was a, I was, it's, it's called a patient care assistant. It's basically a, a certified nurse assistant, um, but we were PCAs, and I did three and a half years at a local hospital at um, Long Beach Memorial, but they changed their name so many times, but it's uh, one of the main hospitals in, in Long Beach, and I was overnights doing ortho, neuro, tele, um, oh, I need to scratch that out, because I, no, I did tele-ish, I was a tele-tech, um, and uh, yeah, so it was pretty cool. I mean, as a PCA, te ponen a hacer de todo. Oh, literally, yeah, I did. Yeah, I was looking yeah, at everything. 
a lot of patients on one camera looking at the hearts another one literally i was looking at legit like 20 20 people at the same time yeah when i worked in the ed we would i, I worked as a as a tech and sometimes like i'd be just doing tele for 12 hours straight um, yeah. or doing you know like roaming around just helping the nurses out so they, you're definitely like a jack of all trades in where whatever floor you're working on oh yeah no in serio so i'm glad that we shared that for sure <laughs> respect yeah. my, my all right. assistant by the way no, oh, seriously, seriously, mad respect from him. Um, all right, back to the PA school topic. What was your favorite part about PA school? I think it would have to be, I, for sure, the friendships that I made. Um, it's crazy. Like, literally, it's, it's brought me to people who, did, who weren't even in my program. So I've had people, you know, friends from Washington, from the East Coast, at todos lados, like, um, you know, and it's, it's made it. The coolest thing that just like poco a poco they start seeing your face and they just become your friends and they, they FaceTime lo que sea. Um, and also I think just the complexity of of, of medicine, you know, it's just get, it's a puzzle. And you're just trying to figure out, you know, like you look at the normal and you're like where is it going wrong in the process. So I think that's the, the coolest part. It's like it's a puzzle. Um, so yeah, that's what yeah, I'm you're like. we're we're, we're kind of like detectives. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm looking for that Seriously. My bad, my bad. Um, now, uh, on the opposite side of the, the spectrum, what was your least favorite part about PA school? PA school in general. <laughs> no, <laughs> um, I think the hardest part was the, the part that I didn't like the most was, you know, like, again, like I said, Yo de Lelo, you know, being in our inaugural cohort, I didn't like that we'd have upperclassmen. We, we were figuring things out. So it was, you know, us sink or swim, you know, because the faculty members were also trying to, like, you know, see how we're going to keep graduating this class. And then also by the time we're like midway through, they're interviewing the next cohort and then how are they doing that while also trying to put us on rotation. So, um, yeah, because I really didn't like that. Yeah, I'm sure that that was like super difficult because just how you guys are trying to figure that out, the faculty is figuring it out también. Like, yeah, you know, so all I'm, of sure, I'm like, sure there was. Ah, yeah. yeah. And, but I mean, I'm like being at, at UC Davis, they've been around for, you know, probably like, 30, 40 years. So they're like an established program, but even our program isn't, you know, there's always hiccups. There's always things that are changing. And, and yeah, I feel like no matter where you go and there's, there's going to be issues. And right. Know, and that, I, think, I, think that, like, I think that's the thing when they, they're, they're interviewing all of us, you know, they want to see like how flexible we are because stuff happens, you know? So, you know, like even by the time you're in school and by the time I was getting out of school and midway, you know, we had COVID, so we had to be flexible. So now, now back to the actual job that you're doing um, or not st still about PA school. What specialty did you think you were going to do on your first day of PA school? Like entrando, what did you think I'm, I'm doing? Crazy enough. Um, I think I was open for everything, but you know, cause I did work in a lot of crazy stuff before PA school también that wasn't healthcare related. My like niche that I think I wanted to go into was like adolescent medicine. Um, so it's like pretty like, like, you know, it's not peas, it's not adults. And it's just like, you know, adolescents in general. Is that like for, because of your, your uh, background or just you were gravitated towards that? I, I think, well, yeah, I think my background. So like, you know, I've been volunteering at the like high school and just trying to figure out, you know, like which populations I liked. And then, you know, being a substitute teacher for like six years, I was trying to, you know, I think I just related so much more to the kids. I mean, uh, I'm not saying I'm hip for any way, shape or form, but I feel like it was just easier. And people just literally like when I have patients, even right now, like they're the ones who open up more, even with their parents in the room, speaking a different language or, or lo que sea, like they just, you know, trust me. And they just literally tell me so much things. I'm like, oh, I'm like, we just met you like 10 minutes ago. So, um, <laughs> You're like, I, I did not need to hear that. Like, yeah, for real. Like, awesome. oh, you know, I got to document this, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> um, but, but yeah, it's pretty I'm, cool. I'm, I, liked it. I liked it. Any specialties that you considered out of the gate? Absolutely not for me. And, you know, I, I respect everyone who does it, but uh, geriatric medicine, um, I'm struggling with like two, three complaints, you know, in 10 minutes, 15 minutes and trying to just cut it down. But yeah, geriatric medicine, um, it's, a, it's a no for me and I respect everyone who does it. What made you go into your uh, current specialty? Uh, so initially I was open for everything. You know, I thought, you know, in PA school, sometimes people are like destined, they know what they want. And I did it. Um, I loved every rotation, even the ones I didn't think I was going to like. And I was like, oh, damn it. So um, by the time I got out of school, I was just applying everywhere. I had job offers too, and crazy specialties. Um, you know, I had interventional radiology. I've had ophthalmology right here in Inglewood, which is like down the street from me. Um, but 
it was just trying to find out. And by the time I applied for my first gig, it was, you know, first I started off with pediatrics and then something went wrong with the providers. And um, they're like, hey, Rigo, you trying to do like OBGYN and internal medicine? And I said, yes. And then, you know, as, as since I switched uh, practices, it was literally the same thing. I was going to do just family medicine. And then another provider retired and then I come back and then boom, I'm literally the same thing, pediatrics, OBGYN and internal medicine. So we're just landing awesome. on, on awesome. the lap. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. And uh, for your current job, how long has your uh, training been? So uh, make sure you, you know, when you're out of school and you're looking for your jobs, I want you to be stern, whatever's in writing. Uh, my training, I think, was supposed to be like around four to six weeks. I think I got like two or three of those. Uh, and then it was you sink or swim, full schedule. Dang. Yeah. And that that's kind of, I feel like the, the trend at a lot of, lot of uh, places, right? Like they, right. they just want to train you even our, our new grads like train you super quickly I'm gonna start, start trabajar. right right but that's why you know I like telling all the either the students I've had or whatever I'm like hey look at that contract if it's not in writing it doesn't exist make sure they put it in there and say Adio um what is the most unique part about your specialty I think I'm like one of the most unique parts of my specialty um I feel like you know especially with OBGYN and seeing you know these patients in general it's really hard seeing you know a male uh, and then aparte, like a Latino male provider who's um, they're like, oh, snaps. Like, so it's, I think that's like the, the unique part of it. But um, nothing crazy, but I think it's just, it's unique in the sense where, you know, you hear a lot of these primary care and these community clinics and you think like just family medicine. But when it comes to my schedule, it's literally broken down into all those specialties, like subspecialties. Yeah, which um, I uh, need to be mentally prepared for because I'm, once I finish, I'm going into family medicine. Yep. Yeah. All right. Question 15. Well, what would, what would you say if you had to sell your specialty, like a car salesman, like a, a car salesman pitch? Ooh. Mm. Honestly, I, I, I don't know. Um, I think I bought like one car in my life and I never knew what pitches sounded <laughs> like. So, uh, like, uh, give me an example or like, how would you, if you know, like, I mean, kind of like just trying to convince someone like, Hey, you know, come, come and work, work at our, at our specialty, at our job. And... Yeah. I'm trying to think like, my thing would sound like a, like a maniac. It would be like, you know, like, Hey, like you're trying to be confused about which medication and what dosage, like, no, <laughs> like, and then, Oh, you know what? You can't take this medication first trimester. Cool. This is perfect. Um, you know, like, <laughs> Oh, you want to give this medication, but forgot, you know, they have this allergy and they're pregnant. Now there's two people, or now you notice you check their labs and their kidneys are like not functioning. Come on over, you know, but I, really <laughs> I feel like you have to be, you know, ready for like the unexpected. Um, yeah. But, yeah. you know, if that's part of it, would you like? And if you like working with other age groups, then, I mean, that's, this is the one for you. Like, I mean, I love the challenge. Like I said, that's just what I do. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. I mean, I, when I think family medicine, I think you got to be a jack of all trades, like for everyone and everything you got to be ready for. Yeah. yeah. And you will all become right. a master, not the master of none. And so that's, it, it varies. <laughs> I'll be d decent at everything. At everything. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so now another question: Why would so? Why should someone not become a PA? <sighs> this is a, a really good question, and I think you know, seeing you know how social media has come into it, um, don't go into becoming a PA just because you want money. Uh, this is way more than that. These are people's lives. This is not for a title. People will still call you whatever they want you to call you. Uh, don't go into it because you think you're going to go on vacations like crazy. Uh, unless, you know, don't think of it because it's a shortcut to med school, you know, because, oh, people are going to call me doctor. I'm not going to correct them. Uh, don't do it for the hype. It is not a hype. This is a profession. If you look into the history of it, the profession is because there's a shortage and we need it. Um, again, you know, we're not trying to creep up on doctors, you know, stethoscopes or any of that stuff. We're not trying to be better than our counterparts, nurse practitioners or anybody else. Uh, the point is we're supposed to work as a team to, for the better outcomes of the patient. And, you know, imagine if you weren't in that position, uh, how long a patient's going to wait until to get, to get seen, to get a referral or to get proper treatment. Um, you're in this because you care about people literally as simple as that dang that's that's probably the the top tier answer that that we will uh, ever ever have that, that was freaking good <laughs> all right and next one uh do you work with uh pa students or pre-pas currently 
Uh, yes. So I currently mentor and I've been mentoring since I was a PA student figuring stuff out myself. Um, I currently still am mentoring and some of these uh, students, pre-PA students have graduated from undergrad and now are accepting roles um, as, uh, you know, future PA students. And it's kind of crazy that they're going to, some of them are going back to my institution. So it's like full circle. Uh, and my current practice, I have not, I'm working on trying to get PA students and pre-PAs. Uh, but in my previous practice, in my previous practice, I was working uh, with students from uh, Charles Drew and uh, from USC. So I had a couple, I had like around three to four students. That's awesome. And that's a perfect segue to the next question. What is your favorite question to ask uh, a PA student? Uh, I think it's like uh, the standard one that you get during rotations. Like, okay, so where do you see yourself? What specialty do you see yourself in? Um, but I think it depends on how the person who's approaching you, um, because we read you, uh, we read patients like, literally when they walk into, when we walk into rooms, when we see them walking down the hallway. So I think, and honestly, like it's just, you know, what skills you can learn from this specialty, even if you hate it, you don't want to do it. There's always a skill to learn and then just take it on to the next one. But literally like what specialty do you want to go into? Okay. Yeah. Are you now back to your actual job? Are you ever nervous at all coming into work? Uh, yeah, sometimes I think uh, I like not knowing what's coming in, um, in a sense. So I don't like looking at my schedule beforehand. I don't like looking, um, you know, at the previous complaints or what patients are coming in because, I mean, not everyone's 100%, but there's times where I psych myself up. Let's say, for example, I look at the next day and I see like 27 patients and I'm like, oh, snaps, like, and I'm already just like nervous and I go in, I wake up and I'm like, you know, but it's usually never that. And sometimes it can be really smooth. So, um, yeah, yeah but it's, it's, good, it's, it's good to hear though, that you, you said you don't look at, you try not to look at the schedule, right? I try not to look at it. Yeah. Yeah. That, yeah, that, that's good. I feel like if I was in, in I'm going to try to do that once I'm out of, out of practice, like to have that kind of work-life balance and boundaries of like, you know, when you're at home, you're at home and you're not, you know, at work and what's at work stays at work. It's, yeah, it's easier hard, said than done. I'm help. sure. Exactly. I mean, it'll come. It'll come. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah, I know. And I also feel like the nervousness is is good, too, because ultimately, like like you said before, people, we have people's lives and the decisions that we make like impact people's lives. And so like exactly. a little bit it of that nervousness. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. OK, so how many uh, patients do you see on average in, in a day? Okay, so uh, typically I see anywhere from like 20 to 27 patients a day. Okay, and what is the most amount of patients you've ever seen in a day? Oh, ooh, okay, spill I remember the, that day. Spill the, spill the tea, Rigo. El tecito real quick? No, dude, it was... Uh, okay, so this was at my first practice, and um, remember I told you I was multi-specialty, so there was a day where mm -hmm. they had providers in a little bit of... Uh, there was one and then there was some on the bottom and they both needed help, but I was supposed to be doing my training, you know, cause you have your, your like, probationary period that day I was helping with both. And literally I was like going upstairs with OBGYN going downstairs with pediatrics and legit it was like 40 patients, 40 something. Like I wanted to Jeez. quit. Yeah. That, that yeah. sounds terrible. Yeah, yeah. I was just uh, contemplating myself in the car. Like, you know, just like with the hands on the steering wheel with the radio up and I was just like, how did I do that? Like three, three months <laughs> out of, out of school, you know, like into practice. And you saw it. Yeah, seriously. Um, kind of now for this next question, besides having that type of day and what has been the most challenging part of transitioning from being a PA student to a practicing provider? Uh, I think it's, you know, people come out with this expectation, you know, because again, you know, the whole glamorization of, you know, the profession is just like, okay, cool. You finish, you graduate, you learn everything, you know, everything you go and you're going to just transition over and learn the specialty. But, um, you know, in school, it's literally like med school boot camp. you know, you're scraping the surface of med school and you're literally just trying to fill in the gaps. So, you know, yeah, you know, the medication to treat the patient, but then now you come into practice and you're like, okay, cool. What's the dose? Um, for how long, you know, what's, you know, you think you look at these cases and you're like, okay, cool, amoxicillin or, or whatever, but then you look at it and it's like, okay, is it three to five days? What makes it three days? What makes it five days? You know, like, when do I follow up with this patient? Should it be like a month? Should it be four weeks, six weeks? Um, so I think that's the part that you, it only comes with practice, you know, and as a student, you could somewhat do it, but once you have that full, you know, set of patients, like, it's rough. It was rough. It is, yeah, because they, they don't even really test you on on um like dose at least our program doesn't test us on dosing doesn't test us nope. like on, on schedule and 
if sometimes they make us like say like, oh, when would you want to see this patient again? And we do have like prescription writing assignments. And right. but again, that's like, we don't even do that anymore. That was during the, like, right. the just like how to write a prescription. Months. Yeah. 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 It's not yeah, much it's, like the dose or like, oh, so yeah, it's rough. So it's like figuring it out yeah. as you go. Yeah. So, but I'm, I mean, it, it sounds like you've figured out how to handle it pretty, pretty well. I mean, I think, I think everyone, everyone eventually when we're in your shoes, we, we, we will figure it out. Yep. That's yep. it. All right. So any, any shockers going into practice or was there anything you just didn't expect that you were shocked by? Um, I think I wasn't shocked in the sense where, you know, it's, you know, you are the provider. Um, you know, I've, you know, going to my second practice, I, you know, I, I'm used to like a lot of like cases where, okay, cool. Especially with OBGYN or like even the adults in my first practice, um, you would see like alarming stuff and like, okay, cool. Go to the ER or whatever. Um, but at the second practice, you know, I had a patient with a, an, ag a, an asthma exacerbation and I was like, oh, snap, we need to provide Oh, snap, that's me. <laughs> so it was like, you know, it was like, okay, cool. Let's stabilize this patient. Let's make sure we're with her. And then, um, you know, the, one of my other uh, colleagues came over and then she was like, oh, snap, like, you're doing a great job and all this. And I was like, yeah, yeah, for sure. So I think that was the biggest shocker. You're just like, you know, you are that person. Like when you ask for help, you are the help. So I think that was the biggest thing where you like, you know, you have to like put your, you know, your big person pants on and then, you know, know that you have it in within yourself to, to treat this person. But I think that was the biggest shocker for me. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, I, in, in those types of moments, you like, it's not like you're just there, you're going into the wolves without any training. Like we've all of the training and clinical hours and everything that we've done, like you fall back on that. And mm -hmm. yeah, and I'm sure, you know, it, you probably didn't struggle to, to quickly, you know, think of what to do in that, in that situation. Yeah. No, it just felt like a TV show. Like go get the provider. Like you are the provider. So it um, now going more towards like your typical schedule, how many hours do you work on average per week? On average, I think they have it uh, scheduled for 40, but I have two admin hours on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but it's been played around with a little bit. But um, so like 38 hours where I actually see or have patients scheduled and I have two hours for, for admin time. Okay. And what, what is admin time for those so, of us that, that don't know? So for admin time, uh, it depends on your practice. So for me, it could be anything from, you know, finishing up notes, you know, reviewing labs, reviewing uh, diagnostic imaging that you did, uh, medications, calling back patients, other stuff that you have that are not typically on your schedule, but that you need to do. So this is like your, basically like your free time when you were like in grade school. So any, any task, any homework, anything you have to do, that's it's your catch up time. Good to know. And then just to, to clarify as well, not all, yeah. Not all specialties, not all jobs give you admin time. Exactly. So uh, if you can, try to squeeze it into your uh, your contract when you are working. Uh, because at my first practice, I did not. And I know a couple of other PA colleagues who um, don't have it as well. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, I know from like some of the PAs that I follow, I see them and they're like catching up on notes on the weekend. I'm like, oh my goodness, like that. That's insane. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Back to your schedule. What time do you normally wake up? So I wish I could sleep in. I've always been a morning person, um, but I wake up at 6.15 every single morning, no alarm needed, even on the weekend. Dang. <laughs> and uh, what time do you normally leave uh, work? Leave work? Yeah. What time do you normally uh, leave your shift? Okay. I'm like, to work or from work? Uh, so from work, my schedule is a little bit uh, different. So I go in from 8.30 to 5.30 on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. And then on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I go from 8 to 5. So it'll be 5.35. But I make sure I leave on the dot um, only because you got to put boundaries and you don't get paid after. Even though you care, yeah. you don't get paid. Seriously. And how many hours of sleep are you typically working on? So... Not to brag, but I get a good, you know, like seven to eight hours. I, I, I'm not going to sacrifice that. No, heck yeah. Same. I'm in like the end wrapping up didactic and I still get my seven hours of sleep. I literally like cannot function. And I kind of right. tell myself, I'm like, you know, part of the second part of studying is consolidating the memories while you're <laughs> you know, asleep. Yeah. That's what so I tell funny. myself. And so it's like, so important. It's crazy. People don't even like, I think like for workout people, también, like sleep is so crucial for everything. Yeah, which is kind of insane when you think about like, you know, 
and residents or providers and other specialties, especially like surgical specialties who Oof. are literally running on like four, five hours of sleep. And they're just like sleep deprived. And like the toll that probably takes on their, their like mental health and their like decision making abilities. Exactly. Yeah. They're both different for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And do you take call? So at my current practice, I will be taking call, but it's more like I have a phone and it'll be like for one week out of the month and then it rotates between providers, but I don't have to go okay. into a, per, a, a practice. It's usually like medication refills and uh, establishing care type of call. Okay. Yeah. Cause typically call is like, you get called up and you got to go to the hospital when those are like, extra yeah, go hours. to a clinic, go to urgent care, whatever. Yeah. So mine is a little bit different, yeah. but it's considered on call. Okay. All right. And are you a night or day shift person? It varies, you know, uh, I like my night shifts. I love my 312s and that was it. But I don't know. I feel like once the neighbors, you know, like, or Los Vecinos, they start cutting their yard and like, nope, I couldn't do night shifts. So um, <laughs> I love waking up early. So I think I'm a day shift person, you know, now as I'm getting older and closer to 30, like I think I'm a day shift person. Yeah, no, day shift by far. I, I remember I worked a few weeks in night shift when I was working at a casino as an EMT. And literally yeah. that month that I was working, I literally made my parents' house looked like a drug dealer house because I put up like aluminum foil on my front. Oh, window. yeah. It's like, and, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah literally cold. <laughs> yeah, like, eye mask, oh, todo, todo. Yeah, I feel you. Headphones, <laughs> todo. It's like, seriously, it's it's tough it's to sleep in the, to the day. Best. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. How long does it take you to chart at the end of your day? So I try to chart between patients. So it, even when I'm in okay. the room, I'm, so, I'm grateful that I was able, you know, like, elementary school like you learn how to like the j space jk space and you're learning all these keyboards so i'm glad that i don't have to look at the keyboard and i give all my undivided attention to the patient um uh, my, mind you we do fall behind um so if i finish early with the patients i will use all that time to catch up as much as possible but then um as you said like i said i have admin time so i try to squeeze that time where i could catch up on charts but i don't do anything aparte or after my um scheduled shift okay all right and now kind of a di different direction. Who are you most thankful for on your care team? On my care team? I think it would have to be, you know, I have a, a PA that's been practicing for 10 years and, um, and she's, she's, she's dope since day one. She's always been like, Hey, an open book, open resource. And I think it goes a long way just being available. Um, even though I don't ask her or consult her a lot of times, she, a lot, a lot of times she consults me, you know, based on my multi-specialties, but, you know, just having someone who's, um, who's who's there and who's available is super helpful. And then aparte, always, even for my first practice, it's a great MA. Literally, those MAs are like I think you said, like godsend. Like it's it's Seriously. such a privilege. You know, they know so much. There's some I've had one that worked, you know, in the same specialty for like ten years. So she could have been like a practicing PA by now. Like she was doing ultrasounds and all So like she was doing everything. So. Um, the, uh, the, the MA I'm currently working with too has been at least doing it for three, four years, longer than I've been a PA. So, you know, I'm always like piggybacking off of them too. And they're like, hey, is this normally what's done or whatever? So literally, you know, from, from a colleague to an MA, like, again, it's a team. It doesn't matter your title. Yeah, seriously, seriously. Yeah. All right. So uh, the next one I have is what is the most rewarding patient experience you have come across so far? So... Uh, 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 dang, I think every day is, no, I was kidding, not to be like a humble brag, <laughs> no, um, I, lo I, I honestly love it, so um, I think one of my most rewarding ones was, you know, being so early and out of school was, there was a patient who had uh, the same birthday as me, so I remember him, and, you know, I got close to his whole family, and he came there for a, uh, uh, he was an adolescent patient, he came there for a physical exam, you know, and I caught, um, you know, I had my differential in mind and I'm just like, yo, this kid, you know, I always say spicy when they have fevers. So I'm like, damn, this kid is spicy. <laughs> like, something up with this kid. Um, and, you know, sure enough, I'm like, hey, like, I'm so sorry. I'm going to cut this, you know, visit short and I'm going to send you to the hospital. You know, and like, I'm going to write up, you know, my differential is what I'm thinking. Of. And, you know, I gave him the note. And sure enough, you know, he was admitted for like this pretty intense. And it was a uh, early, um, uh, what was it like? early acute like pilo you know and for this oh, kid wow. that I just had, and so it was like you know but it i didn't even look at his history i was you know because we see so many patients so you know i go into the room and i'm just like boom like i'm like this looks sick you know and you know and yeah. you know, sure enough you know his parents came back and they're just like oh my god thank you so much like you've helped this kid out he's been having this recurring issue for like so long and i was like yo like 
I'm still in the training process. And I was like, dang, I caught that. That's awesome. That's awesome. And that, I mean, I feel like that mainly comes with the, you know, experience of like what looks sick and what doesn't, you know, like, cause you can literally, yeah. that's what our instructors always tell us. Like you should be able, and you'll get to a point where you can just walk into a room, not even, you know, have say a word to the patient, but you can see them and you know, they're, they're sick yep. or not. Yeah. Yeah. No, and that's what I tell people. I'm like, you be grateful of all your normals because once that abnormal hits, you're like, this is something's wrong and you'll hear it. You'll see yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. So what is the hardest day you have experienced besides the, the, that situation where you had to see like 40 patients? Oh yeah. Uh, that, yeah. That day I cried. Um, <laughs> um, I think one of the hardest experiences I had was, um, you know, you know, being an OBGYN provider, it's, it's, you know, when you have to tell and break news to these patients. So, and it comes a lot of times more frequently than, you know, one may think, but you know, you're telling parents, um, that, you know, their, pay, their baby or their, you know, however you want to call it, um, it has, you know, a, a genetic disorder, you know, is, you know, or they're at risk for a spontaneous abortion or like a miscarriage or that their baby, you know, passed away inside. Um, that is like one of the hardest things I have to do. And then especially when you have to do it in Spanish because of the, the, the translation of words, it sounds like, you know, it always comes back to what could I have done? So um, just saying, you know, about a death or like a stop of, you know, fetal activity is, is so hard every single time. Yeah, I, I literally cannot imagine right now we're going through OB-GYN and I'm, I see these like these, um, you know, uh, disorders or, or see, you know, pictures. And I'm like in my head, I'm thinking like, dang, like I cannot imagine diagnosing this and, and, and you know, breaking these news to these patients. We actually right. next this upcoming Wednesday, we have a, a Aussie, like a simulated encounter where we have to break in bad news to a patient and a mistake in that that we did in kind oh. of a controlled environment but yeah so i'm i'm getting ready for it i mean there's not much i can do i guess to prepare it's just you know yeah be, uh, i think as, as being genuine being being human is the best thing you can do that's it yeah oh and yeah. just a little side note too um when I was a student, I remember I was so excited in my first rotation. They're like, hey, Regal, you speak Spanish, right? I'm like, oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. They're like, come on over. Like, you want to see an OB patient? I go in there. And I was to tell her that she was, you know, having a spontaneous abortion or a miscarriage. And I'm just like. Híjole. That's, yeah, so that's I'm like, tough. in Spanish. That's and I'm just tough. like, I remember they're excited. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, el, el embarazo, you know, you're this far along. And yeah, yeah. it was you know, to tell her bad news. And I was like. So, wow. Yeah, that, that, so, that, that, that's mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely tough and tougher in Spanish. I, yeah. I was in a situation at the, the student work clinic where I work at and where I was, we were doing a ultrasound looking at this uh, woman's uh, ovaries and we ended up finding an incidental uh, cyst. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the provider was looking at me and I was, he was like, oh, tell her that she has, you know, a whole huge cyst and like trying to come up with the words to tell her that as she's looking at me to communicate that to her in Spanish. It's just a whole other level. Like uh, you, there's literally no words to describe like how difficult that is. Right. And then some of the words are just so yeah. harsh. So you're like, there's no going around it. Yeah. Yeah. Seriously. All right. So I'm finally editing this video. I just want to say thank you guys for watching this interview. If you uh, like this content, there's a second part because we ended up talking for a whole hour and, and uh, you can actually watch that up here. If you want to find out more about who the heck I am, there's an intro video that I did about two weeks ago. Um, again, that second part, I'll be posting it very soon. Thank you guys for watching. Again, I'm the Mexican PA, and uh, the guy I interviewed today is uh, Rigo Ramos PAC, also known as the Chicano PA on Instagram, and I think he's also starting his YouTube channel today, so um, go show him some love. Thank you guys so much for watching. Saludos, animo.